And we are live. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today we are streaming live from Copenhagen in Denmark. And today we're going to talk about gimbals. More specific, we're going to talk about the brand new gimbal from Shion. It's the Weeble 2. Let's have a look. And welcome to this live event. As I said before, we are streaming live from Copenhagen and we are gonna talk a lot about gimbals. First of all, I want to welcome all of you here. My name is Frida and I'm going to be your host for this stream. It's my first time actually hosting a live stream. Normally I'm on the other side of the production as I have a production company myself called Hybrid Productions. We produce a lot of video and a lot of live streams. So I'm not used to being here, I'm used to being over there. <laughs> um, as I said, we produce a lot of videos. So obviously I do have a gimbal myself. Currently I have the Shine Weebill S. So I guess I'm just as excited excited as you guys to have a look at the brand new gimbal from Shion. I want to encourage you all to hit the chat if you have any questions for either me or for our very special guest who will join us in just a minute. Then we will try to answer all of your questions. We have an exciting program for you today and as you can see on the behind the scenes uh, angle of this stream, we are streaming from this very, very cool car repair shop. Around me I have some beautiful cars, we have Rolls Royce, Bentleys, Mercedes and a lot of high-end cars and I cannot emphasize enough how cool this location is. If you have another look around the location, you can see all of the gear and our whole production team lined up here. We have some top professional guys with us today who will take us safely through this stream. Another fun fact is that 90% of all of the gear that we use to produce this stream is actually from Focus Nordic. And another fun fact is that the headquarter, the Danish headquarter of Focus Nordic is placed just above this place. But enough about the setting and the location and the gear. Let's get down to it. Let's welcome our very first or very special guest. It's Peter Markholm and let's introduce the product, the brand new Weeble 2. Hello. Hey Peter, welcome hey. so much. Thank you. Peter, as I just uh, told the, the audience, I do have a gimbal myself. It's the Weeble S, yes. but I'm far from an expert on gimbals. And that's why we have you here today. Thank you. Peter, you are a video creator, you are a YouTuber, and you are the owner of the Gimbal Academy. Yes. So I would say that you are more than qualified to be our specialist today. Yes, I hope so. <laughs> yes. Before we get down to all the nerdy great stuff, I would like to take you through some basics about this gimbal and we have a presentation to show you some of the specs. This new uh, uh, stabilizer, this new gimbal from Shion, uh, it has uh, improved stability, it has a I am doing something wrong here with the presentation. I know someone is on it. <laughs> it uh, has a bigger uh, motor than the previous one. It has a sturdy arm. It has newly designed locks and it has a payload for up to four kilos and it only weights 1.4 kilograms. It has a new big touchscreen that you can use for real-time uh, monitorization of your feet and it has a built-in a uh, battery that runs up to nine hours. And one last real cool feature, I think it is that it is powered by, uh, you can power it by a uh, power bank. So while you're on a set, you can easily plug the 
power, bu power bank in and it will recharge. So that's what I have for, you know, the formal stuff. Before we get down to business with you, Peter, we have a very important disclaimer for you or about you. You are here to talk about your experience with the gimbal and it's your opinion. You are neither paid nor hired by Cheyenne, but you are a focused Nordic friend, yes. which means you often test a lot of their gear, especially their gimbals. Yes. Correct? Yes, that's yes. correct. <laughs> okay. <coughs> cool. So, Peter, welcome here. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> For how long have you been uh, testing this, uh, this new gimbal? I've actually only had it for two days. So, I recently got it, yeah, two days ago. I picked this up and we shot a little video with it. Mm -hmm. And it's always difficult to learn a gimbal in sh such a short amount of time. So normally I test them over longer periods, but to get my first impression, to make a video was possible to do because I'm used to working with gimbals. That makes sense. That was going to be my next question because I know from myself, first time I get a product like this in my hand, I can feel the weight and the quality of it, but it's yeah. hard to know how it performs until you use it on a real gig, on a real production. Yes. So how do you go about testing stuff like this? So when I start testing s gimbals, I first look at the build quality of the actual gimbal, how sturdy is it, and so on. But then again, I go into the menus and the settings and try to adjust them so they'll fit my needs and not the, the, the settings that comes when you get the gimbal. Because there's a big difference between getting to know the gimbal settings and just use the settings right out of the box. So that's the first thing I do. I try to adjust the settings so that the gimbal will be as smooth as possible. So, and after that, I try to go out and shoot something. I normally um, um, try to arrange some kind of shoot or else I just go out and shoot architecture or buildings and try to use some of the gimbal moves that I used to use on sets and try to see, does the gimbal perform as I expect it to? Mm -hmm. And if it does, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Great. So now we tested it only for a short period of time, but you had some time with it. Yes. What is your first impressions? My first impression of the Weeble 2 is actually good because we have been wanting a update from the S for a long time. And the good thing about what they've done here is that they have made the overall configuration of the arms a bit bigger so you can have a bigger camera on there. Today we have an S5 on here. So that wasn't really possible in Weeble S. And as you said before, it has bigger motors and it is a bit stronger. So that's one of the really good things. And then one of the big updates is, of course, the flip-out screen that they have on the side here, which also gives you a video feed from the transmitter. Mm -hmm. So that actually means that if you don't need a big screen as the extra screen, then you can just use this one. So some will love it and others will hate it. So that will be, yeah, the mix. Position. It makes sense with, with the small screen if you want to pack light. If yes. it's just, you know, a, a fast production, you made up, you have to produce right away. Yes. It's very compact. Yeah. So I could see that, that work. Um, so I'm a bit of a geek myself. Yes. <laughs> and I love talking camera gear and I have a whole lot of gear myself. And I'm always interested in hearing what, what other professionals use to produce their video content. So could you tell us a bit about your camera setup? Yes, my main camera setup is the Panasonic S1H, which I have as an ambassador for Panasonic. And this is actually my first time shooting on the S5, mm -hmm. which is the little brother to the S1H. So that's my main camera. And the problem with the S1H has been that I couldn't fit it on the Weeble S. So I needed the Crane 2S or the Crane 3S, which is quite a large gimbal. So I'd hope that the S1H could go on this gimbal, but unfortunately it cannot. So uh, I might have to get an S5 uh, to accompany that. So that's, that's my main setup. Okay, cool, thank yeah. you. Um, besides being a video creator and being a YouTuber, you are, as I said in the intro, the owner of the Gimbal Academy. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about what you do in the Gimbal Academy? Yes. Um, as you said, I have a YouTube channel and I mainly talk about gimbals and things related to gimbals. And then I made the Gimbal Academy because there was a lot more questions or in-depth questions that it's hard to answer 
on a YouTube video. So what I actually teach in the academy is how do you properly use a gimbal, the techniques behind it, and how to move with the gimbal and all the moves that we are going to use when you shoot on a gimbal. And we're also going to show you some of them today, but that's the main focus on the Gimbal Academy is that to learn you in as short as period of time how to properly use a gimbal. It sounds so right for many video creators, I guess, or I know from experience a lot, go down, buy a gimbal, think that now you have everything you need, yeah. but then you kind of, <laughs> you lack of knowledge on how to move around with it. So I could imagine there is really something uh, Yes, because as you said, there's a lot of people that think as soon as you have a gimbal, then you're all good. Then everything will be stabilized, you'll have buttery smooth footage. But the reality is that if you don't adjust the settings and you don't walk correctly or move correctly with the gimbal, the footage won't be that good. No. So, um, yeah, that's what we teach. And I know you have a small video for us that you will show us in a minute. Uh, that you produced recently? Yes. Yes, and in a few minutes we'll have it online or on air. Yes. The video is, is the test video that we shot uh, the other day, and the purpose of that was to try to use some of the gimbal moves that I teach in the Gimbal Academy, and we're also going to look at today. So try to look at the video uh, with the moves in mind mm. and see what I do and see if you can see the camera movements uh, within the video. Yeah, so, yeah and then you'll run over the movements afterwards? Afterwards, we'll show you a couple of the moves and I'll talk about some of the techniques that I use when we shoot on a gimbal, mm -hmm. but I will relate back to the video with some of the things. Cool. And if everyone is ready, I think we should see the video. Alrighty, so the Weeble 2 is here and let's talk gimbals. The first thing that comes on my mind is of course buttery smooth slow-mo footage. It's tasty, we like it and it just looks freaking good. But sometimes it's a bit overused. So let's jump in and talk about some of the things that we often forget in our busy lives. The everyday stuff, the being on the road, the routines and the workflow that keep us connected and help us tell better stories as filmmakers. All right, before we get all techy about the Weeble 2, let me introduce you to this guy. Yes, he's good looking and he loves running, but he spent a year restoring this 1973 Volkswagen bus. It's a beauty of itself and the amount of detail and hours of hard work put into this van is simply amazing. It's that wonderful feeling of slowing down and being taken back in time for just a little while. Let's back up for a moment and put the van right here. This video is shot in 24 frames per second, so you can see how stable the new Shoe and Weeble 2 is. The gimbal moves I used are pretty basic and put together with some handheld shots, and the in-body stabilization of the Panasonic S5s makes it look pretty damn good. This beautiful old lady is not his everyday car, but a passion project and a glimpse of the past that now will shine on the road wherever he takes her for a spin. But let's get back to what we're really here for, the new Shoe and Weeble 2, and me showcasing what we can do with a gimbal like this. The Weeble 2 has beefier motors, can take larger cameras, it has an updated interface and stability. It is still a compact gimbal, but with a slightly larger footprint. The new redesigned back handle adds more usability and mounting options, while the flip-out screen gives you full control over the settings and connects with the wireless transmitter. Yes, it's brand new. If you're something like me, you probably want one right now. And we are back. Finally, we've gotten, we gotten to the part that I've been so excited about. Peter, you are going to show us some tips and tricks and some of your magical gimbal movements. I cannot wait. Peter, the floor is yours, so whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm just trying us. to start up the monitor here, so we can get a feed. Yes, there we go. All right, so 
This is some of the things that I teach within the Gimbal Academy. And the first and most important thing that you want to learn when you use a gimbal is, of course, how to hold the gimbal properly. And on the Weeble S here, I have an extra handle. And the reason that I always have that is because I want to use uh, or control the gimbal with two hands. So if you don't have this handle, hold the gimbal down under instead. But if you have the, the, the side handle, that means you can get a wider posture when you shoot. So you're not as tucked in as if you hold the gimbal down here, then it'll be a, more, a bit more unstable. So try to hold wide instead of holding in tight. So that's why I use the side handle. This is also Shewan's handle. Uh, I would just mention that. So that's how we hold the gimbal correctly. And when we control the gimbal, I use this handle to hold it. That's my gimbal hand. This is where I hold the gimbal. And then I control the gimbal with my right hand. So if we are going to pan, let me see if we can pan it. Put it here. If you're going to pan over the pan motor, then I hold firmly with my left hand, and then I pan with my body and the, the right hand. So I hold, and then I push and I pan the gimbal. So that's how we hold the gimbal. So get a side handle if you don't have that, or hold down under with two hands. Don't hold the gimbal with just hunt one hand. If you have the option, use two hands. The same goes if you use the underslung mode. Try to hold it with two hands. Hold the top handle and then hold the tripod legs down low and try to keep as upright as possible. So that's how we hold the gimbal. All right, the next thing is, I just have to check my notes here. Yes, the next thing is, is of course, when we start walking with the gimbal. You want to learn how to walk with the gimbal properly uh, because as soon as we start to introduce motion or the walking motion, then we'll, we'll start, use, uh, start introducing the set axis. And that's the unstable axis. That's the one that's yourself. So the best way to learn how to walk is to use the heel to toe. And I, yeah, are you on my feet? Yeah. So when you want to learn, could we take it up again so you could see me? I see so many creators use the bent over ninja walk method of walking, which is a very bad way of walking because you can't walk around like this for hours if you're on a real production. So you don't have to look stupid when you walk with a gimbal. So therefore you want to learn to use the whole foot instead. So if you take a look at my foot, use the whole foot to kind of roll over. So you roll over one step and then the next step, right? So that's how you're gonna walk slightly bent with your knees. And then you want to have an upright position. <clears throat> Think about having a string through your body when you walk. So if we're gonna walk forward, then we'll just walk forward, upright position, two hands on the gimbal, and then push forward. There we go. That's how you get the most stable footage when you shoot on a gimbal. So one of the other things that I teach is that you don't have to hold the gimbal upright at all times. I find that the best way to shoot on the gimbal when it's slightly angled, about 15 degrees if I can, if I'm shooting upright. If you're shooting down low, that's another story. But if you shoot upright, slightly angle the gimbal, because then you will engage all the motors uh, and get the most out of the gimbal's performance. So that is, that's some of the techniques that I use when I shoot. Let me just see where we are. Oh yes, there's one thing that you actually can relate to when you are going to walk. I use this technique in my workshops is that walking around with a cup of water, because when you walk with a gimbal, you can't see how stable the footage is unless you watch all the footage back. So if you take a cup of water and fill it up, 
and then walk around with that. Then you can see when you are the most stable when you walk around. Just a little tip to learn how to walk. All right, so that is the uh, techniques and the position. Um, there's one thing I want to mention, and that is when we use the gimbal in the underslung mode, try to have the pan motor or the roll motor directly over the camera, because then you can use that as the pan motor once you're down here. So once you're down here, use try to have the roll motor up here. Then you can walk around and you can easily pan with the gimbal. It's not always we can do that, but if you can, try to hold it in that position. Am I walking too fast? Okay, it's fine. All right, then um, let's talk about some of the gimbal moves that we used in the video we just saw. The most used gimbal move was actually the push in and the pull out. We are pushing in on things, we are pushing in on the car, we are pushing in on the interior in the car. We're also pushing through things. There was a big tree where I was pushing uh, besides the tree where the car kind of came along. So the push in shot is good for revealing something or pushing in on a subject. And to perform the push in shot is actually just a walk, straight walk forward. So I mostly use PF mode and on the Weevil 2, you can see we have PF, lock, and follow down here. So we'll put in PF mode. You can also use lock mode, but then you can adjust it once you start walking. So I like to use PF mode. And then, of course, I set my settings on the camera. I press record. There you go. And then when I start walking, I push forward. I do not just start walking like this. I push the gimbal forward before I start walking. So remember, use the heel to toe movement and then push forward. So let's push onto the car there. So I push the gimbal forward and start walking. And when I end, I push the gimbal forward. Then I won't have a hard stop and a hard start uh, in this shot. So that's the, uh, that's the push in and the, and the pull out. The pull out is the same as the push in. We are just pulling out instead. And the push in can also be done without moving. So instead of walking, then we can just use the movement of our body. So we'll do a push in shot where we'll just use our upper body and our hands to move the gimbal. So if you're going to push in on that, we'll start back, back and then we'll push forward like that. And I can actually reach pretty far just by moving my body like this. So that's how I perform the push in or the pull out. All right, let me just see what else we have. Are you with me, Daniel? It's OK? Yeah. All right. So the next one is a tracking shot or a dolly shot, which are seen on larger productions where you have this big track or dolly and two operators. The one guy is pushing the dolly on the track, and the other guy is, uh, is controlling the camera on the actual dolly. But with a gimbal, we can mimic that, that, um, that movement with only one operator and the gimbal. I'm going to use Frida here as our subject, and we're going to use lock mode. So on the Weevil 2 here, it's just flip it down, and we're in lock mode. The lock mode means that the, the gimbal locks in whatever position I put it in. So if I put it 90 degrees towards Frida, then the gimbal won't move. And let's just see if we can get a picture on the screen. Just have to turn it on now. One second. All right. So now that we got a picture on the screen, I don't have to use the flip out screen on the gimbal. But if we didn't have a screen down here, you can flip the screen out 
and just look at the screen and walk forward. That's the whole purpose of using lock mode, so that you won't be walking like this. Can you, can you go a bit back so you can see? You don't want to walk sideways like a crap, because that will give you very unstable footage. So you want to be able to walk in a straight line and look where you're walking. So when we do this, the, the good thing about it is that I can see the shot, and I can also see where I'm walking, when I'm walking forward, so it won't trip over anything. All right, Frida, should we try it? Yep. Okay. So I'll just frame you up. So I'll frame her up. I go once, no, wait, wait, I'll say <laughs> go. I want to be a bit, I will, I'm going to be a little bit before you, okay? So I'll frame her up, we'll hit record, and then we'll push forward, go. So I'll just adjust to her speed once we start walking. So that's how we do a tracking or dolly shot with a gimbal when we track a person. All right. And let me just see what the next one is. It's the one where I walk. Yes. Direction, I think. The tilting shot is a shot that I use a lot in real estate. Just I either tilt in for the floor and tilt the gimbal up like this. We'll put it in follow mode. Here we go. We either tilt in and up like that, or you can come, come from up and tilt the camera down. The good, the good way of using this is if you have some kind of foreground. It could be trees, because that will emphasize the movement of the actual gimbal. Now we don't have any trees here, so we'll use Frida, Frida as our subject. So she's going to walk into frame while I'm walking forward. So this is actually a push-in, so we're pushing in the move that we made before, and then we tilt down at the same time. So I'm going to take a step back here, just going to frame it up. Exposure, there we go. So, and the important thing is here is that we keep the gimbal moving at all times. So, once you start walking, don't stop the movement. Then just retake the shot if it's not good enough. But you have to keep pushing the gimbal all the way through the movement of the shot. Because that will give you that nice, smooth transition of the actual gimbal. All right, I'll say go in a minute. So, I now have two screens. I have the little screen on the camera, but I also have the screen down here on the actual gimbal, which is pretty nice. So, Frida, are you, are you ready? Yep. Uh, that's good. We go, so I'll push the gimbal down, and I'll keep pushing, 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 all the way through. So that's how we do a tilt up or a tilt down. Same if we go from the floor, we just tilt up instead. All right, so that is, that's the three main moves that I use a lot. And then I have the segue here as well, because the segue is, just put the, this one here. There we go. So the segue is something that I use when I have the opportunity to roll around instead of walking. Because the segue will take away the set axis, the up and down movements when we walk. So having two wheels that I can control with my legs and have the freedom of using the, the gimbal with both hands. So we'll just power this up. And in the video we just saw, there was the last shot where he is driving away, which actually looks like a drone shot. 
it's made on this actually set up. So all you actually do is that you control the Segway with your feet and then you can control the gimbal with your hands. I'll spin around in a minute. Yeah, come over to die. You can see, if we'll take a look at the drone shot that we made in the video, I actually put the gimbal in PF mode, and then I took the screen down so I could see my feet, and all we did was just to roll forward, just like that. It's a really, it's a really good way to use a gimbal uh, to get that drone looking shot because there's sometimes where you can't use a drone if, if it is a crowded place or a populated place where you can't use a drone. Then this is a, a good way to get that bird's eye view and use the gimbal for that. So let me show you a uh, pushing shot on the car here where we use this extension pole and push in through, in through the door of the car. So the benefit of having an extension is that we can go with a lot longer reach in through the car and don't have to bend over or go all the way into the actual car. And one of the things that I do when I do a shot like this is that I use my underarm here to kind of rest the gimbal. That will take some of the weight away from out here and put it on this point here instead. If I had the gimbal out here and tried to hold it like that, I wouldn't be able to hold it for that long of a time. So I rest the monopod on my arm. So let's try to do the shot into the car. You can of course also just do this by walking. You don't need the Segway to do this. Do you want to go on the other side uh, or do you want to film it from there? All right, okay. So again, we're going to use the monitor on the side of the actual gimbal because you can't really see the screen which is down here. So I'll just frame it up like that. I'll hit record. And I'll frame myself up. Then we'll do a nice push in through the car. I'll just push in and just keep pushing Pushing, 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 pushing. And then we can do the pull out in the same time that we go. Just pull out and move backwards. And then sometimes I do it a couple of times to make sure that I get this shot as I want to. So that's, that's actually how you use a monopod. And the good thing about having the monopod with you when you are on a Segway is that you can set it down because you don't want to hold the gimbal at all times because that will just wear you out. You will destroy your back after long periods of working with a gimbal because you add a lot of weight to your actual camera setup. All right, that is some of the gimbal moves that I use. There's a lot more gimbal moves. I could keep talking for hours, but of course, you're welcome to join the Gimbal Academy. You can learn a lot more in there. Uh, we'll put links to that in the description afterwards. Let's go back to uh, Frida. Thank you so much, Peter. That was very inspiring and very uh, full of learning, I think, for most of us. Before we move on, now you, probably all of you have the most, uh, you know, have a question, and it is, what is the price for this gimbal? As you can see here on the presentation, we sell it in four different packages. We start with the basic one that includes the gimbal itself and a tripod. Then we have build-ons, build-ons and build-ons until you end at the Supreme Extreme Deluxe Pro Extreme version. And it has all the stuff that you need for this amazing gimbal setup. The only thing it doesn't include is all the knowledge that Peter just gave to us. So I guess now it's a full package delivery. And I've been told that sales just started today. So starting from today, this gimbal is now available. And now I think we should move on. 
So Peter, if I can get you back up here, then we will run, run through some get of the... Get the monopod the... off, so one <laughs> yes. second. That's so cool. Now we will run through some of the specs of this uh, gimbal. And uh, we have a pretty cool camera mounted just above our heads. Oh, where do you want the... Uh... I would like it here in, in center, please. And um, I think you, if, if you just get a, a minute to, to control your breath after running around. Yeah. <laughs> then in a few seconds, we'll be ready to show you all the, the cool specs of this one in a close-up picture. And after that, we have uh, time for all of you guys. To, if we've seen a lot of uh, great questions in the chat, so we'll run through them in a few minutes. I don't know why, but we should get a picture on the actual gimbal. Let's try to power it up again. And as it is with everything, especially <laughs> electronic things, we yes. sometimes have a few mistakes and errors, but we are working on getting a clear picture from this gimbal, yep. and I think it will be We'll All in just get it. a minute. Meanwhile, I think I'll show you the bag that comes with the gimbal if you buy it. So it comes with this very, very handy, very sturdy uh, uh, bag that's almost like a case. It feels quite sturdy, so you should not be afraid to, uh, to stack it among your other gear. I think it will hold well. Yeah, I, uh, if I can just mention a thing about the mm -hmm. case, normally the gimbals come with a normal standard phone case, and I know a lot of people like to use the case to kind of store the gimbal or use it for transport, uh, but the problem with the old cases is that you will have to break the gimbal fully apart, mm. and once you're on location, you have to rebalance it and everything like that. With a case like this, you don't have to go through that process because you can balance it from home, put it in the case, take it out, and you'll nearly be ready to shoot once you're on location. So it's a nice addition that they have added a case like this mm -hmm. uh, for the Weeble 2. All right, so we got the picture after we started up the gimbal. So is that yes. correct? There we go, yeah. So one of the cool features about the Weeble 2 is, of course, the added screen, because I myself really like to use an external monitor when I shoot on a gimbal. And this little monitor just adds that because once we put the gimbal down, you can see I really can't see the screen anymore, but I can just flip the screen and then I have the full view of the <laughs> from the camera. Can you see it up there? Yeah, you can see it there. So it's a rotating screen. But of course, to make this work, you will need to have the transmitter attached. Mm. So if you don't buy that, it won't work. So that's, uh, that's probably one of the biggest selling points of this gimbal is that now you don't need that extra monitor, unless of course you want a bigger view, but I would actually say this works very, very well. Um, so if you want me to talk about some of the other things that I really like about this gimbal is that, and some of the things that I have been talking about some of the videos that I wanted to see updated from the Weeble S is that on the Weeble S we were holding around the controls. That mm. means that we got a lot of gimbal failure because once you start holding, the gimbal suddenly started tilting upwards or downwards. And I got this question a lot to say, there's something wrong with the gimbal. No, there's nothing wrong. You're just touching the controls. So it's nice to see that they moved that away. And then they have added this back handle. On the Weeble S, you could also use an extra tripod on to the back handle here, but now they've actually made a dedicated back handle that sits very firmly on there, and it's with a quick release plate. So if you pop it in there and forget to lock it, it won't fall off. So slide this off again, there you go. Can you see this? If I should show the handle here, that's a pretty nice handle. It's a good rubber grip. And then on the top here, you have a cold shoe mount where you can mount a monitor. And you've got two uh, screw holes, quarter, quarter 20 screw holes here. And then you have another mount on the side as well to mount a monitor or anything like that. So I really like that they have added this. It also adds a bit more weight to the gimbal 
which isn't a bad thing because the Weeble S was very light. Mm. And to able to stabilize something, you want a bit of weight in there. Yep. And it's not too heavy. Uh, this, I think it's about... It's 1.4 kilo. Yeah, 1.4 yep. kilo. So pretty nice. And the actual footprint of the gimbal, it's a bit beefier, it's a bit bigger, but again, it, it doesn't do anything bad to it, I would say. I would say they have updated the build quality quite a bit, because mm. the Weeble S feels very plasticky and kind of toy at sometimes. Yeah, so this one is more sturdy, and the payload has, They you say know, it could take well, right? to four kilos. Four kilos, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So it can take quite a much much more payload than the cameras that will go on there because mm. the S1H I don't think I think it's about one kilo and it can't even fit on there so there's enough room for balancing anything on this gimbal even if you have a very big lens then if you have a one. big and heavy lens and that's yep. where the bigger motors come in because as soon as you try to introduce the bigger lens, that's where the motor's really going to kick in mm. and use the force that they have. So that's why they updated this. And then I know there's a new chip in it, and they say it should be more stable, the gimbal, and I really can't say if that's true or not before I really get to use the gimbal a lot more, but that's one of the things that has been an issue with the Weeble S. There's some of these micro jitters, which comes with all gimbals mm. because we are introducing electronics uh, within our shot. So there will be small micro jitters here and there, but hopefully this takes care of most of that. And then one more thing here on the side, you can see they have moved the follow focus wheel here up to the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of that, I would say, because that actually takes away the possibility to use it with my thumb. I can see, can you see it? Where are you? There, you're there. So that's one of the downsides of this gimbal, is that I now have to take my hand off the gimbal uh, and use the follow focus wheel. But again, I rarely use the follow focus. I only use it when I shoot real estate with my indie field on the front. So it's, it's not a deal breaker for me, but for some it might be. And I guess if you don't really rely on your autofocus, it would be a deal breaker, right? If you could don't, no, because you're not able to no, do no, manual. I don't use autofocus. Okay. Uh, I use manual focus in all my shoots. So what I do is that I set my focus, and then I shoot. So if I'm going to go into a room, then I'll go into the room, set the focus, and then I'll go back, and then I know once I come in there, everything will be in focus. Makes so. Sense. It's not a deal breaker if you use manual focus at all. It's just the way you work with it. So that's my overall thoughts. And I think you mentioned this, we got internal battery now instead mm -hmm. of the old battery style where we got, got, got to switch out the batteries. There's mixed, mixed conception for that. Although a lot of the Weeble S users and Crane 3S users love the the possibility to switch out batteries and not have to rely on, as you said, a power bank. Mm. So, but they say it will last about nine hours. Of course, you won't get nine hours of use if you use it heavily, but it'll probably last a shoot anyway. But that's, that's kind of my, my early thoughts of the actual gimbal. That's nice, thank you. Yes. I can see that we have some questions in the chat, yes. and I would like to once again tell you Guys, please, if you have any questions, don't be afraid, don't be a stranger. Oh, we'll yeah. bring up as many as possible. But we have one question, and I will just read it here. One thing, before we take the question, we have the master eye. Yes, sorry, once again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. The master eye comes with the, the Pro and the Pro Plus. Mm -hmm. I'll just ask, is that correct? Pro Plus. The Pro Plus, <laughs> yeah. So if you buy the Pro Plus, you'll get the Master Eye. And the Master Eye is actually a screen that controls the gimbal. Hmm. We can't show you because this is just a dummy. So what it'll do is that you can get the video feed from the actual transmitter onto this screen. And then you can also control the movement of the gimbal. But we can't test it out today. But as soon as we can, we will cause, cause make a video about how this works. 
So back to the questions. Sorry about that. So, Peter, do you have the camera stabilization on while you're using the gimbal? No, I, uh, I take it off uh, when I shoot on the gimbal because I don't want anything to interfere with the electronics of the gimbal. Mm. And if you shoot on a very wide lens as we have here, this is 16 millimeter on a full frame, you will get that wobbling effect uh, at some point uh, if, the, if you have the IBIS on. But again, yes. It also depends on what camera you're shooting on. On Panasonic, I, I turn it off. I've also had some of my students say, I think it works better with the IBIS on when I shoot on a Sony. So it's trial and error, but if you ask me, I would always take it off. But I think it's always, you know, a personal uh, opinion. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. Some, um, some, some, you know, productions, it makes more sense and whatnot. I guess it goes the same with the stabilization within the, the lens as well. To yeah, if yeah. you want to have it on yes. and off. So you'll have to try to see what fits your needs yes. and what works best with the setup you have. Cool. And we have a new question. Yes, so I can see that we have a question about the pricing of the product. So if we bring on the slide, we can show everyone. Yes, so you can see here the, uh, the basic package. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, uh, sorry, I just heard some. <laughs> Yes, it's 599 euros, and the, the Webull 2 combo, it's 710 euros. The Webull 2 Pro Edition comes for uh, 970 euros, and the Webull 2 Pro Plus, which I called a silly name before, <laughs> it goes for uh, 1,179 euros. So that is the price range for this new gimbal. And we have another question. And we would like to compare the two uh, gimbals, the Webull S and the Webull 2. So I'll just go and get the Webull S over here. And yep. then we'll have a side-by-side -side view of the two gimbals to compare them. Yes. So there you can see the two gimbals. Can you see them there? Yeah, I think this is a very yeah. good picture of them. Now you can see there's, there's quite a big difference between these two. You can see how much smaller the gimbal actually is, the Webull S is, than the Webull 2. So when I first saw this, I, my, the first thing that came to my mind, it's going to be a problem to get it into my backpack. Mm. But it turns out it fits in there very well. So uh, it of course depends on what backpack you're using, but right now I'm using the Loft Pro backpacks and it, it it fits in there pretty well. So, yeah, I don't think that's, that's, that's anything bad. One of the things that they have updated on the Webull 2 is they have updated the locks because that has been a big issue on the Webull S, especially the pan motor lock here, which slides in and locks itself. Uh, hopefully, they have updated that on these locks. You can see the locks here a different the pan motor lock is here on the side now. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully won't get that issue uh, with this gimbal. And the thing that I was talking about before is that now we have a dedicated grip where before we was holding around the actual controls of the gimbal. So that's one of the big, big things that they have added. So now we've seen them side by side. I was wondering how easy it is, is it to set it up compared to the Webull S? Is it more difficult? Is it the same? No, it's, 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 it's take the same. This, it's the same way they have made it. You have the same way where you open and, and close the, the, the yeah, hatches. Yeah, and the hatches. It's pretty easy to balance this gimbal as well. I didn't have any problem with it. So as long as you know how to properly balance it, mm. it won't take you more than a minute or, uh, or two minutes. Or so it would be up. sort of the same. What about this side handle, if, uh, if you buy that with it? Yeah, this, this side handle is something that I always talk about that you should get. Uh, and Shun has finally made a very good side handle um, that they don't include it in any of the packages, which I don't know why they should do that, I think, because as I said before, it will give you a much more stable shot and a better way of holding the gimbal, mm -hmm. uh, and you can take whatever hand you want off. Uh, 
So using this side handle gives very, very good sense uh, in my mind. So if you don't have it, purchase it as soon as you can. Okay, Peter, thank you so much. I think we have a few minutes left and I would like to hear more about the Gimbal Academy. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to share with us uh, about it? There's not much more to it than I just try to, as fast as I can, in the fastest way possible, try to get, get beginners of using Gimbal from nothing to something. Mm. Because there's nothing worse than getting a course and then you'll have two, three hundred videos and you don't know where to start. So the Gimbal is, Academy is pretty precise so that you can within a couple of videos, actually take the gimbal and go out and get decent shots. That's the purpose of the academy. Yeah. I think that's very easy to implement in your work to watch, uh, watch a few videos of making videos. It makes sense to, yes. to have it like that. But I then think. again, it, it, it comes with practice. Mm -hmm. So sh you can watch some of the videos and then you can come back and go out and practice and then go out and, uh, and then watch some more and then go out and practice. And you can also take them with you on your phone uh, because it's online. So you can have them with you on the shoot if you're <laughs> something you want to see, then you just take it up and see it. So that's, that's, that's kind of the academy, yeah. Okay, thank you so much, Peter. I think we're about to wrap up. And before we, we stop, uh, I've just been informed that all of uh, the stores that sh sells this uh, amazing uh, gimbal, they have now added it to their web shops. So it's available for everyone now. Okay, <laughs> so, so it's available for So, so if, if you want to, go ahead, buy this one. I, I think we've seen that it's, it's pretty handy and it's, yeah. it's a nice uh, gimbal to operate. Yeah. So yeah, it is because there's a lot of Weeble S users out there and I know that they have been waiting for an update and not wanting to go the other route and go to DJI. They've mm. been waiting for this. So um, I will, of course, make a lot of videos about this gimbal as well and learn you guys out there how to work with this gimbal. And just for mention, my video, my first impressions video will be out in a couple of hours. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's so amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Peter. I want to thank all of you to for uh, having tuned in, for listening, for all of your questions. I want to thank the amazing crew at Light Motions and at Focus Nordic for having us. Thank you for letting me be your host. I hope I did a decent job. <laughs> thank you so much, Peter, Welcome. for showing us your tips and tricks. And to all of you, have a very nice summer until we see you again.